Well, happy Wednesday, coming Community Church. Pastor Thomas here. Hope you are having a wonderful and blessed Holy Week as we ramp up and gear up for, of course, Good Friday, this Friday, and of course, Easter on Sunday. Hope you can make it to both of our services as we are just super excited to be able to, to gather together as the body and uh, to celebrate what Jesus is doing um, and celebrate the fact that Jesus is alive. So to that end, I went back and I was looking over some old messages that I'd preached previous Easter's and I wanted to bring up a couple of points from those old messages over the next few weeks as we kind of consider um, what the implications of Easter are for us today. Uh, and the first one that I wanted to do uh, is from uh, Luke's Gospel, uh, chapter 24, starting in verse 36. So uh, if you got your Bibles handy, grab them, open them up. If you don't, just listen in and uh, let me read uh, this text for us today. As they were talking about these things, Jesus himself stood among them and said to them, Peace to you. But they were startled and frightened and thought they saw a spirit. And he said to them, Why are you troubled, and why do you do doubts arise in your hearts? See my hands and my feet, that is that it is myself. Touch me and see, for a spirit does not have flesh and bones as you see that I have. And when he had said this, he showed them his hands and his feet. And while they still disbelieved for joy and were marveling, he said to them, Have you anything here to eat? They gave him a piece of broiled fish, and he took it and ate it before them. Let's pray. Lord Jesus, thank you so much uh, for this chance to get back on the groove of our Wednesday devotional. And I pray that this encourages folks as we look at Holy Week. May everything that we see in this text remind us of the hope we have that because Jesus is alive, we have hope that transcends our circumstances. Thank you. Thank you for all that you've done for us. It's in your name we pray, Jesus. Amen. Well, as I take a look at this text, the thing that jumped out at me when I preached this originally a few years ago, and what jumps out at me again today, is just how Jesus deals with the disciples, how he deals with these people. I want you to notice as he comes into this, as we read this text, as he comes to the disciples, number one, he went to the disciples. He didn't go to the Pharisees. He didn't go to Pilate. He didn't go to Caesar. He didn't go to any leader in that sense. Instead, he came to those that he was closest with. Jesus cares for us, and he cares for people. He cared for the twelve. Well, 11, excuse me. And in that care, he went to them to meet their needs. Jesus didn't flex when he showed up. He didn't go, see, told you, dummies, why weren't you paying attention? That might be how I might respond, if I'm being honest about my own sinful heart. But of course, Jesus is without sin. He went to the disciples. He didn't flex, but instead was kind and gentle with them and said, why are you troubled? Why do doubts arise in your hearts? And gave them the evidence that they need to that they needed to believe. Here are my hands. Here's, here's my body. Go ahead. Poke it. Poke me. I'm real. And then as they were still dumbfounded, he said, I I'm kind of hungry. You got something for me to eat. And in that, he demonstrated again that he was alive, resurrected. What I want you to notice in this text is that Jesus met the disciples where they were at. Jesus was not afraid of their doubts. He was not afraid of their fears. Nor is he afraid of your fears, your doubts, your misunderstandings. Nor is he afraid or, or can't handle mine. Jesus wants you to trust him. He wants you to believe him. And so because this is true, he meets us where we are at, and he gives us what we need to believe. So let me ask you a question. Do you have doubts? Do you struggle with things? I know I have doubts and struggles in my own life. I'm not sure a pastor is supposed to admit that, but if I'm being honest, I have doubts in my own heart. I have doubts in my own life. 
But what I've learned over the years is that Jesus is not afraid of them. He is not incapable of handling them. So rather than being hard on myself and beating myself up and wondering how it is that I am to, to figure out how to live and get past these, instead, I take them to Jesus. And I encourage you to do the same. Don't be afraid to say to him, Jesus, I don't understand this, but I know you do, so help me to understand. It's wonderful to know that Jesus cares enough about us to want to meet us where we're at and to help us to grow. Well, I'm praying that you join us on Good Friday and on Easter Sunday. And I'm praying that you'll uh, uh, be able to, to help us celebrate the resurrection as we kick off a, a new series in Thessalonians that deals, our first message will deal with the resurrection and how we are to live now in light of it. So until then, I'll be praying for you guys. You keep praying for me. We'll see you on Easter Sunday and on Good Friday. And until then, coming church, love you guys. Have a great rest of your holy week. We'll see you then. God bless.